Good evening or good morning, depending on where you're located on the planet at this very moment. Gentlemen and the three and a half ladies who watch this channel, today we have a very interesting integral generalized by a parameter s. s here is a complex number with real part greater than one. Okay, cool. So we have the integral from zero to infinity of cosine log x divided by one plus x to the s. So the first thing I'd like to do here is translate this cosine log x term using some complex analysis. And by that, I mean just Euler's beautiful formula. We have e to the i t. This can be expanded as cosine t plus i times sine t. So if we let t here equal to the logarithm of x, then we have e to the i log x. Terribly sorry about that much better, e to the i log x equal to cosine log x plus i times the sine of log x. So this implies that the cosine of log x equals the real part of x to the i, meaning that our integral here, let me just zoom out a bit. So the integral here can be written as the real part of the integral from zero to infinity of x to the i divided by one plus x to the s dx. With an our transformed integral, we're gonna make a substitution letting x to the s equal u, which implies that x here equals u to the one by s. And this further implies that dx equals one by s times u to the one by s minus one du. And we see that the limits of integration are clearly not bothered, so this implies that i of s equals the integral, rather the real part of 1 by s times the integral from 0 to infinity of what is x to the i? That would be u to the i by s, terribly sorry about that, times u to the 1 by s minus 1 because of the differential element divided by one plus u, du. And speaking of implies that, I say that quite a lot, and I just remembered a comment from a while back, it was on an old video of mine, where someone commented, uh, take a shot every time he says implies that, so I imagine that would be quite a lot. Now I'm Muslim, so I don't drink and I don't encourage it, rather I discourage drinking, so if you want to take a shot of something like, you know, take a shot of lemonade or something else, well, counting, uh, take a shot of lemonade or something else every time I say implies that I believe that would be a lot of lemonade or whatever other drink you're having at the time. Okay, so we have this integral. Let me just perform some simplifications. We have the real part of 1 by s times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the 1 plus i by s times wait a minute, 1 plus i by s uh, minus 1 du divided by 1 plus u. And this integral is really nice. I really like this integral because it reminds me of one of my favorite tricks. And that trick over here is the reflection formula for the gang function. So the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the z minus 1 du divided by 1 plus u equals gamma z times gamma 1 minus d, and this equals by the reflection formula pi divided by the sine of pi times z, or pi times the cosecant of pi times z, same thing. And in our case, we have z here equal to 1 plus i by s. So this implies that i of s here equals the real part of one by s, rather we now have pi by s times one by sine of, multiplying by pi gives us pi by s plus i times pi by s. Now let's expand the sine function in the denominator to get a closer look into the real and imaginary parts we have. So we can expand this using the addition formula for the sine function, and by that I mean the addition of arguments. So we have sine pi by s times cosine 
i pi by s plus the cosine of pi by s times the sine of i pi by s. And the cosine of i times z is the hyperbolic cosine or the cosh of z. So we have sine pi by s times the cosh of pi by s plus cosine pi by s times now sine of i z is i times the cinch of z so here we have the hyperbolic sine or the cinch of z okay cool but wait if we reciprocate this then we should expand using the complex conjugate that sounds neat so let me just write this thing here so that i can say this implies that the cosecant of pi by s plus i times pi by s equals expanding using the conjugate would give me in the numerator sine of pi s times cosh pi by s minus i times cosine pi by s times the cinch of pi by s divided by the square of the absolute value of this complex number which is of course sine square pi by s times cosine square pi by s plus cosine square pi by s times the cosh square of pi by s okay cool so this is the structure that we have for i of s and if we let s here belong to the set of real numbers then we see that we only need this bit of the denominator. So what if we look at some cases like s here being equal to 2? In that case, we have i of s gives me the real part of pi by 2 times the sine of pi by 2 is 1. So we have cosh pi by 2 divided by cosh square pi by 2 where the cosine pi by 2 is upstairs and downstairs result in, well, in this case, only the one downstairs results in a 0. So this implies that i of 2, which is actually a case I evaluated explicitly before. I did not need the real part operator over there. I have no idea why I wrote it. Anyway, so i of 2 here equals pi by 2 times the hyperbolic secant, and I don't know how to say this in a fancy way like sinj or cosh, but it looks like sech. Yeah, whatever. Hyperbolic secant pi by 2. And there's an interesting case involved for s equal to 5. And I think regular viewers of the channel know where this is going. So i of 5 would be pi by 5, terribly sorry about that, pi by 5 times what exactly? We had sine of pi by 5 times cosh pi by 5 divided by um, the squared cinch. Yeah, terribly sorry about that again. Sine square pi by 5, cosh square pi by 5, plus cosine square pi by 5 times cinch square pi by 5. Now, cosine pi by 5 has a really nice closed form. Cosine pi by 5 equals half the golden ratio phi. So this implies that the sine of pi by 5, which is root 1 minus cosine squared, so that would be 1 minus phi squared by 4. That is to say 4 minus phi squared by 4. And phi is supposed to, phi squared is phi plus 1. So that means we have root 3 minus phi by 2. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And plugging in this result, we have i of 5 equal to pi by 5 times the sine function, which gives us root 3 minus phi divided by 2 times the cosh of pi by 5. That doesn't have a nice or cool little closed form like the cosine does. Anyway, so over here we have the square, so that's going to be 3 minus 5 by 2 times cosh square pi by 5, and then we have a plus sign here. We have phi squared by 4, there's going to be a 4 over here as well, times cinch square 
pi by 5. Now, cosh square equals 1 plus cinch square pi by 5, correct? So this implies that I of 5 equals pi by 5 times root 3 minus 5 by 2 times cosh pi by 5 divided by, what exactly do we have? We would have this 3 minus 5 by 4 term and attached to the cinch square functions, we would have cinch square uh, pi by 5 factored out and we would be left with phi squared by 4 plus 3 minus phi, terribly sorry about that, by 4. Now, what exactly is this thing over here? This is phi squared minus phi plus 3 divided by 4. Now, phi squared minus phi minus 1 equals 0, so this thing is supposed to be unity. So we have 1 plus 3, which is 4, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. Last time I checked. Anyway, so that means we have I of 5 equal to, I could expand using 4, so that means I would be left with 2 pi by 5 times root 3 minus 5 times the cinch of pi by 5 divided by, what exactly do we have now? We have 3 minus 5 plus cinch square pi by 5 times 4, which is quite an interesting result involving hyperbolic trig functions. Anyway, that was cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.